We need some real men. Amen. 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 That I'm talking about, you could cut them and it wouldn't, they wouldn't even flinch. These little old prissy, sissy things that get in pulpits now say they're a leader of the church. They only went up and got in the pulpit because their wife told them to. The holiness of the church. He's going to be upset over that when he gets back. Wealth of the church has been taken away. Some of the holiness is missing. The commission of the church, that's one of the riches. When a church is not carrying out the great commission of the gospel, they're failing God. When we're not doing what we can to get sinners saved and get them to Jesus, something's bad wrong. I think that's one of the riches of the church, one of the failings of the riches of the church. And then the blessed hope. Well, we need to be preaching about the blessed hope. Amen. I tell you, I found out something in, in my son going to heaven like he has. I found out, Brother Mark, sometimes they, they say a tragedy. I heard Dr. Kenny McComas years ago preach that a tra tragedy like that will either make you or break you. And I, I, I understood at the death of my son how I appreciated so much more what Jesus did for me. Yeah. What God did by giving Jesus. Because I, I was able to determine that there ain't nobody on earth that I would give my son for. Yeah. Not anybody. Right. You listening? Not. Not anybody I ever met would I give my son's life for you. I'm just sorry I wouldn't do that. The best person I ever met, I wouldn't let him die for him. And Jesus came. Yes. Amen. And died for the worst lot. Yeah. The sorriest bunch of old sinners. Yeah. God had to turn the lights off. Because he that knew no sin was made to be sin. It was our sin. He's the scapegoat. That's why they took him outside the city. Crucified him out there. Took our sins out there with him. What a Savior. Amen. What a Savior. What, what love that God showed toward us in giving his son, went on purpose and laid his life down for the likes of me and you. And even tonight, being saved for years, we're still not worth anywhere close to what he gave. You listen, I've been saved 48 years. And I haven't been off in vile sin and chasing. I'm not bragging. I'm just making a statement for illustration. I haven't done it, but I am still not worth anything like what he did for me. Let's stand together. The Lord's coming back. Boy, is he hot. He is coming. That's why I ended with that thought of the blessed hope. That's the promise we have. It's not going to always be like this. This world is in a turmoil and rocking and reeling. And everything more unstable seems like now than it's ever been in my lifetime. I'm 60 years old, and it seems like it's worse now than any time I've ever seen it. I want to say to you, we're nearer home than when we believe. I'm a whole lot closer home than I was in 1961 when I bowed at an old-fashioned altar and asked Jesus to forgive me and save me, take me into his family. Well, I'm a lot closer home than that. I don't know when it's going to happen. I know what is going to happen. Jesus is going to come. What if you had to meet him tonight? How would it be in your heart? If there's anything that's undone, anything that needs doing, why don't you come get around this altar and do business? I know we've already had an altar call, but if you uh, if you have a need, don't don't leave. The warning is, the exhortation is, let's run all the way to the finish line. Let's not cut off to one side or the other, slow down, or stop altogether. Let's run to the finish, Father. I pray in Jesus' name tonight 
Lord, that you'll put the word of God in us and not escape us. And you'd have it to do in our hearts what would please you. Draw us up closer to you. Those areas of failure, those areas of neglect, those areas, Lord, that we've just been slothful and we've slid back maybe and let some things slip. Help us, Lord, to once again come and, and just pour our heart and soul out to you and apologize to you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness of those things where we let you down. And you've never disappointed us, but there ain't no telling how many times that I've disappointed you. God, help us tonight. Get a fresh glimpse of Calvary, the price that was paid for us. Help us and we'll give you all the credit for what takes place. Save anybody in the building lost. And Lord, anybody that's not serving, I pray you'll deal with them. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you have a need tonight, just obey the Lord. But you want to say something.